Hello and welcome to the channel. Today I'm going to be working in a legacy Model Y today. What I'm going to be talking about and installing this car today is something that you can do for either the new Model Y Juniper or the legacy. I am doing a legacy today because it's something that is currently not in the legacy. What I have here is a solution from a Tesla product company called Tessery. This is an ambient light strip. By the ends of it, it will have blind spot warning and a few other safety warnings that you can take advantage of also. Again, in the legacy model Y, you don't have anything that tells you that um, that's real uh, visual cue. So this gives you two solutions. It gives you a ambient light strip that you can have in here, useful. Also gives you a blind spot warning, door opening indicator warning and other things, all at an easy glance. I'll probably say probably even better than what you have right now in the uh, Model Y Juniper. Three simple components that's in it. Um, you have the ambient light strip itself, right? That you're gonna glue to the dash. You've got a cables and that's it. And then some pry tool, a pry tool to help you Take some power, but basically you plug this into the data port and the power, you connect it to the strip, and that's it. The only thing you're gonna be needing that's not included in the product is this double-sided 3M tape. But I had this one before from previous installations, so I will let the vendor know if they can include something like this in the package. I think they have like a one-stop shop for everything. But again, uh, I think it's a very useful solution that's probably even better than what you have right now with that little tiny dot in the Model Y Juniper, and they do have options for Model Y Juniper also too, so you don't have to do this only for legacy. So on that note, let's jump into it and we'll go from there. All right, so first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna prep this light strip with the glue strip and then just set it by itself. So um, take this out and again, it's nothing to it, it's very, that's it. This will go basically along this end. I'm gonna have the cable be on this side, the passenger side, because we're gonna plug it into the data port that's on the passenger pillar. So starting from here, I'm gonna take my double-sided tape and I'm gonna put in it right under. You want this light strip part facing out, right? So I'm gonna be putting the tape on top of this, right? So it's gonna go under this ledge. So I'm gonna be sticking it up like that with the light facing out. Let's talk about this data port while we're here. So it connects, this is the power. This will go into your power port, all on that side. This will go to the data port. Everything is in, the, in that A pill over there. And then what it does then is it converts all of that into a USB-C output that then you use this cable to plug into that. And then this then connects to this. So it's not, connecting directly from this light strip to this. It's converting it to like a USB-C output that then you connect into this. So, uh, but all of this stuff will be handled in the BP, in the A pillar, so it's not gonna be visible. But yeah, you don't have enough length in there to do it to one to the other side. So you need this output here, the, the, the power source to this, to be on this side. So again, let me take my glue strip now. This is probably gonna be the most work you're gonna be doing is getting this glue uh, strip on top of the light strip. All right, so that part is done. Now let's get to wiring. And then as a matter of fact, if you want to streak this on right now, we can, but I'm going to do the wiring first. Um, it does not go end to end. Um, it's going to go, you have to probably start it from like, it goes from like this. I wish it was a little bit longer. So it goes end to end. So you can actually see like the indicators over here, but it's going to be starting from like the edge of this vent here to the edge of the other vent. So. It's something like this is what it's going to look like. So it starts from here. So your indicators will be more like here, not here. But I'll keep that in place just like that. And then we'll do the rest of the steps. All right. So we're working with the space in here and in here. This is very easy. You take a pry tool and you can push it in here to pop up that spot. There you go. That piece is out. Here too, same thing, you can pull it out and up. 
in the like in the juniper model y this whole piece is one single piece so that piece and that piece it's one piece they come out together there's a little clip in here that you're going to pop out and then once you pop that out this piece simply comes out i'm not going to take it out all the way the power we're going to be working with for the power is down in here and so i'm going to bring this and then um gonna take one more clip out here there we go all right so first step i'm gonna go into the car menu safety all the way down power off power that off i'm gonna take this power um port here and i'm gonna press and pull and then i'm gonna take this one here plug that into it now and then on the open port on the other side i plug the tesla one back into it we've daisy changed that and then the data port right now is currently open so i'm just going to take this plug this end into a data port this becomes open end for the daisy chaining and then uh let's see i'm going to allow this to come under here So then, take this and uh, and that's done. So from there, this will route up somewhere like this. I'm gonna take the USB C portion of this, plug that in here, and uh, probably will fold up this wires up to this point. So now that I've plugged in. The USB-C into this, I'm gonna take this end, I'm just gonna plug it in right now and be done with it. And that's that. All right, so with that done, I am going to take and start putting all my cablings back. I'm done with this wiring portion over here. So that, this I'll tuck in there just like that. And then there we go. If you need to pull out this water strip, you can do that if it helps you. The key thing is getting your plugs back in where they need to go. And you want to also make sure you're not pinching any other wires. So that's in there. And I'm going to take that. That's clip back in. That's good. And put my water strip back. All right. We are done with the wiring. Now we're just gonna finish everything first before I close up that spot and then we we'll, are good. Okay, so now that I've powered everything back on, um, you can see the strip is lit up now. And actually, if you look at that end, there's a brighter light over here. That's because the front door here is open. So if I close that front door piece here, there you go. You can see that piece is now regularly lit and if i open this door here it gets brighter so the first thing you can see here is you have a bit of a warning sign that tells you hey something is you know uh out there for you to be concerned with so now what i want to do is just kind of measure and see where does my what do i need to install again my previous uh gauging it looks like it's going to be between where this vent side vent uh starts up to the other end there so that's likely where I'm going to keep it. I'm also going to try to glue this more towards the edge. Don't push it in all the way because if not, you can't see it. As you can see, you want to make it be more flush to the edge of this lip over here. So the bulky end of this cable is what's going to be at the end of the vent there. So uh, on that note, what I'm going to do then is I'm going to peel off the back end of this and start gluing it down. I'm gonna start this and I'm going to just align. And then from there, I peel a little piece and align with the edge.
and that's it and you can see lit end over there lit end over there because i have both doors open so and so i've got a turn signal on here you can see over here it's flashing green um because i have that door open over there it's not showing me the turn signal but again some of the benefits you can see in here turn signal i've got a green flashing over here that lets me know what's going on over there and so um let's finish up the wiring and then we'll do some testing i'll come back with feedback so for this end here, what I'm trying to do is get this cable to go behind this plastic plate and just be tucked away. So you might have to pull this out or however way you can get that to go behind. That's it. Then I can pull through so that I'm not having the wire. The wire is pushed to the back and then it's all in here now. Um, I don't have too much slack. When you're talking wire in here, make sure you avoid putting it where you have the uh, the clip hole. So just rotten it down to avoid that one there and that one there. I'm actually gonna tuck it in just behind this. There we go. And then on that end, it's done. We'll take this guy here. Push this back in and that's clipped in place. We'll take this guy here align the clips and boom that's it done wiring and you can see the light so very easy very quick very simple um you've got a user model in here it's all in chinese but i think um i'm going to scan this qr code and see if i can get some translation for what other features you can do because i believe there's other things you can do but again i can't really interpret this right now so i'll do that and i'll share feedback once i have more information on the model okay so i've turned off the lights in the garage and try to just keep it so you can see the light itself a little better so that's the ambient light it's it's not too bright um i did look into the manual a little bit uh the best way to really control this light is to install the applet now the applet is in wechat it's a chinese app um and i've i've set it up before a while ago it's a bit of a pain to set up if you're not you know if you're not in china but um so i'm not going to go through the whole applet piece but the simple way you can control and change stuff here is with the right scroll wheel and again i know it's a little bit dark in here but on the right scroll wheel when you're in park it will control it like you can see now it's blue and then I scroll up, I got red, I have, I uh, guess, yellow. Then I have, it looks like it's off, but in the back of the screen, there is a little bit of a red thing down there. And then if I scroll back up again, it will, uh, it goes back to starting with white. And then um, I've got, I guess, orange. That looks more like cyan or teal. Then I've got green. Oh, no, we skip green. So well, basically, when you're in park and you scroll up or down, that's how you control the lights on the... Um, it does not respond to pushing left or right. Whenever you turn your signal on, it's always going to flash green. So no matter what color you have on, your turn signal will always flash green. So even if I change the light color, you can see it's always going to be green for turn signal. Uh, if I turn on the other light, let's see. There you go. You can see both of them flashing. And if I open any door, so I'm going to open the rear passenger door now. What it does then is it lights up the same color you have, but it lights up that end a little bit more. So it doesn't, you can't really tell if it's front or back, but it just tells you which side of the door is open. So again, on this side here, you can see I've got the light on now on this end. So now let's do a drive and show you what it looks like when you're driving. You can see on the left side, the driver's side, that there's a red light that shows up. And you can see that's a light right there. That's your blind spot warning. This is letting you know that there's a car in your blind spot. It will also show on the passenger side that there's a car on that side also too. So without even turning on your turn signal, it will show you that red light to let you know there's a car on your, your blind spot. And it's, it's very nice, very useful. It's bright enough for you to see day or night. And also when you're driving, that red light that just showed in the middle of the, of the steering wheel, that's your overspeed warning. And that light will come on and flash whenever you exceed the speed limit by a certain amount. It will flash three times to let you know, hey, you're going about the speed limit. 
there's also an option here where the light glows and it goes from left to right and that's based on your acceleration so when you accelerate the red bar will increase and when you decelerate it will shrink back towards the middle and so it's almost like your energy bar that you see when you're driving so there's lots of different options with this light bulb, different views you can have. It's very, very useful. I think it's very helpful. It definitely helps make your drive a lot safer. And so that's the um, ambient light strip with the blind spot warning uh, feature. Like I said, you know, it, I think it works really well. It alerts you sooner than I would say Tesla does. And that's because with the Tesla one, you don't get a blind spot warning unless you have your turn signal on. That's when you will see the camera and then the red bar. But this will at least light up for you and show there's a car in your blind spot if, if you don't have your turn signals on. So definitely very useful. Um, uh, there's definitely a lot of features that this um, has and that helps definitely make your car a little more safer. So. Hopefully this is helpful. Again, it's very, very simple installation, nothing to it at all. Uh, simple plug and play and with lots of helpful features, especially if you have the previous Model Y or Model 3 that don't have the blind spot indicators in the um, in the side uh, speaker. So yeah, if you want to order yours, I will have links and discount code in the description. Check it out. If you have feedback, questions, put in the comments, let me know and I uh, hope it's been helpful and then we'll see you next time.